Hi there and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. And today on my channel, we're going to be making a fabric style tumbler. So we're gonna be taking this super cute 24 ounce travel mug and we're going to be transforming this into a beautifully designed plaid fabric and glitter design tumbler. So of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. Check that description box out for discount codes as well as links to all of my social media so you can follow me on other platforms as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. So of course, as I mentioned, I am starting with a few items here. I'm starting with a 24 ounce travel mug. You've seen me use these before. And so this is kind of how I put things together before I kind of decide what the actual cup is going to look like. I always have an idea. And so I love to grab things to just kind of get myself started. So let's go ahead and get this cup prepped. And then we're going to focus on the first part of the process, which is going to be applying the fabric. So I've already cleaned and sanded and prepped my cup. I've just base painted it with a flat white spray paint. And now I want to cut a piece of fabric that is going to be the a correct size for the cup that I'm using. This fabric I originally picked up, I believe from Joanne Fabric. And so I really love to just go to the fabric store and just grab different patterns and styles and different things that kind of catch my eye um, because fabrics can be really fun to use. I don't often get to use them, but I tell you and I assure you, I have two full like little storage cube bins full of fabric that I really need to put better use to, but I always gravitate towards the fabric section when I'm headed to either Michael's or Joanne. So once I've gotten a section that I feel is going to wrap all the way around the cup, I'm just going to sort of cut this to size. So just cutting sort of the width of what I need first before I start to cut the top section off, um, leaving myself a little bit of excess, kind of like what you would do for vinyl. You can also create like a template for yourself for any of your cups. Because this is fabric as well, what I am keeping in mind is that I want to bring the fabric just over that curve. That way I can kind of stretch and manipulate the fabric to fit over that section. This is not so easy to do with something like vinyl because typically you get a lot of creases and wrinkles and things, but because, because fabric has really good give, you really can manipulate it quite well, but you do also have to be careful. And I'll show you something that ended up happening on my cup that I didn't realize literally until it had already gone under epoxy, but still turned out to be absolutely cute and beautiful. So now that I have my fabric sort of sized to the section of the cup that I'm going to be applying it on, we are going to make sure that it all fits. And now we're going to get into applying this fabric to the cup. Now for applying the fabric. So I am going to use polycrylic to apply my fabric. So this is the Minwax polycrylic that you guys have seen me use to seal in decals that are holographic or seal my washi tape. I don't typically ever use it to seal glitter. I usually will gravitate towards using a clear gloss spray paint for sealing glitters, but I do love to use polycrylic for creating ornaments, for applying fabrics, anything that would normally be Mod Podge outside of its use for glitter. So I'm going to take my Wet n Wild brush, which is my fluffy paint brushes that I purchased from the Dollar Tree, and use this to apply my polycrylic and then apply my fabric much like I would be applying vinyl. So the one thing that I did mention kind of when we were cutting the fabric is that <clears throat> keeping in mind that this kind of fabric, right, fabric typically tends to be quite flexible. So this is a cotton woven fabric and there are lots of different kinds of fabrics that you can grab. I typically stick to and gravitate most to cotton woven, which is what I'm using, as well as uh, spandex, which has much more give and stretch. For either fabrics that I typically like to use, there usually is a little bit of stretch. The spandex stretches a lot and you have to be careful about over stretching it and kind of warping what the design and what imaging is on the front. Um, that is something you also should be mindful about cotton woven fabric and that's actually what happened here is I overstretched my fabric so when I got to the one side of the fabric on the other side with the handle um, because I was stretching it and just making sure it was super like flat and you know applied very evenly across the cup I had stretched the bottom section farther than the top section and so I have kind of like this slanted section of, of plaid lines in the front of my cup but 
I think it still turned out cute, even though I ran into those issues. When you don't have such a straight lined pattern on your fabric, then you don't run into these kinds of issues, but definitely something to keep in mind, to be mindful about what the pattern looks like on your fabric before you go into, you know, kind of stretching it and really flexing that fabric in order to be able to fit around your cup. So I'm just applying a really thin layer of the polycrylic to my cup. And then just literally putting my fabric over top of that and getting it to stick down. The reason why I do prefer using polycrylic over Mod Podge is because what I do find for me, at least personally, is that this dries a lot quicker and gets stickier quicker than Mod Podge does. And so I do find that I can get the fabric to adhere really well to my cup um, much quicker than I can with Mod Podge. Mod Podge typically still stays wet for a little longer, and sometimes you have an issue with your fabric kind of still slipping and sliding all over the, you know, whatever you're trying to apply it to, and that's something that can be really frustrating when you're just trying to get this applied. So that's kind of why I like to use polycrylic versus using Mod Podge. You can also use Quick Coat, which is very similar to polycrylic as well, and that's from CCDIY. I have mentioned that in my first video ever, which was a fabric tumbler, um, but that is also an alternative to being able to use to apply your fabrics. So now the probably the most difficult part about applying a fabric to a cup that has a handle is trying to manipulate the fabric around the handle. The one thing that is helpful is that obviously the fabric is really flexible and you can remove and reapply quite often without you know sort of any damage to your fabric but it still can be quite you know troublesome to try and cut the fabric around your handle to get everything to lay nicely so I'm just going to use my fabric scissors here to cut a slit in the fabric and give myself room and space for my handle to fit in between that section and then I'll cut any of the overlap at this point on that is going to kind of overlap to the other section of fabric. Um, it would be beautiful if it always all meets perfectly on the other side, but let's be honest, that doesn't always happen. And so sometimes you do have to do a little bit of fabric surgery in order to get everything to kind of be placed the way you want it to be and to make sure that you don't have too much of an overlap, which could, cre which could create a bit of a lump or bump in your tumbler if you don't make sure to trim off that seamed area. So then I'm just gonna go in and apply a little bit of polycrylic really get everything to stick down and this is where I do spend a lot more time is I do really make sure that I go back over that section and the seam where the two pieces of fabric meet with polycrylic before I go all the way around the cup with my first few coats of polycrylic. So I'm really paying attention to my edges as well because remember I did want to bring that fabric all the way down over that curve of the cup because I really can stretch this fabric and get it to lay down quite nicely which really comes in, in handy because it really makes a beautiful sort of seamless design and really focus on the top rim as well making sure that I have a good seal and my fabric is adhered really nice to that top edge. That way I don't run into any issues with epoxy getting into that top seamed area. So once I'm done with getting the fabric applied, now it's kind of time to finish messing with the top rim. With the top rim, you can use something like small scissors to be able to trim off the rim. What I typically do when I'm focusing on the rim is as I'm applying my first coat of polycrylic, which you'll see me do here, is I'm going to go back around and kind of use my finger to just push over the fabric that is the excess over top. I like to apply the all of the coats of the polycrylic that I'm going to be using to seal which is anywhere from three to four thin layers over top making sure each one dries in between and you'll just see me kind of push the extra fabric with a little bit of that polycrylic over the top. I like to wait until the entire piece of fabric is kind of hardened and sealed before I'll go in and do my final trimming with either my craft knife or again a pair of small fabric scissors to be able to get into those small quarters of the fabric. So unfortunately I did fail to film the section where I am cutting off the excess section on the top of the rim here of my fabric but literally what I did just like I would with vinyl after my layers have dried I just took my very sharp brand new blade on my exacto knife and I just very carefully drag that across the top to remove that excess.
So now that my fabric is completely dried, sealed, the fabric has a very hard feel to itself, I now can go in and start the glittering process. So just like we would with a vinyl cup, we're going to work on the vinyl section first before we go into the fun glittering section. And so something that I also like to do, especially when I'm working with the handle, is I'm just going to tape off the section by the handle because sometimes I can be quite messy when it comes to applying Mod Podge and I want to make sure to protect the fabric and not get any glitter or glue on top of this section and get any, you know, sparkly on my fabric, which I want to keep just the true pattern as it is. So we're going to go ahead and tape this handle off, covering up all of the fabric that's surrounding the handle. And then we're going to use our Mod Podge like usual to be able to apply our glitter. And so now it's time to go ahead and take our Mod Podge and our paintbrush and get this glittered. So I am using just regular Mod Podge. I'm not going to base paint because the color that we're using for glitter is white. So I'm just going to go in with my brush here and I'm not going to tape off the edge. I'm okay with getting a little bit of glitter on the bottom edge. Um, I can pretty much do, you know, some pretty good precision work with my brush. The handle, I don't always have such a great, a great go at sometimes. And so that's why I do tape off that section, but I'm going to go ahead and get this section all uh, applied with my Mod Podge and then we're going to be using a glitter which was from the last uh, My Aisha Creations Glinal box that I get. I get her subscription and I am going to apply the glitter Flashy Snowflake. So Flashy Snowflake is a really pretty, pretty white and if you guys have followed me long enough you know how much white glitter I have and this is definitely going to be in my top, my top favorite white glitters because it's so beautiful. It has this very fluffy texture, very similar to um, shattered crystals from her same glitter. Um, and it's got like a really beautiful shift. It shifts like a silver flash, which is perfect, perfect, perfect to kind of mimic and imitate snow. It's such a beautiful color. It is definitely something that you'll want to make sure that you pick up off of her website. It's just, oh, it's so beautiful. So we're going to go in after we have applied that to the bottom portion of the cup. We're going to go in and apply a coat of Mod Podge to the handle and we're going to apply the glitter there as well. What I do find with my handles, I do have to really spend a lot of time with my handles when it comes to glittering and using Mod Podge as my glue adhesive because I always end up with bald spots on my handles if I don't pay attention. And you guys know if I don't have to go in with a second coat of glitter like I don't want to, which is why I typically gravitate towards epoxy method glitter application, um, but do pay attention to your handle because for whatever reason, when you think there's just enough Mod Podge, there isn't. So I always go over with my brush a couple couple extra times just to make sure that I get really good coverage on the handle and that there aren't any sp bare spots where I might be able to see that just paint exposed underneath. So we can go ahead and remove the tape now at this point and you're also going to see me go ahead and grab just a glove and I'm going to just push down this glitter. So because this glitter is so fluffy, I want to make sure that I don't have to do any additional coats of epoxy in order to make sure it's smooth. So the way to do that is to just push down your glitter. So you'll see me do this a lot with uh, chunkier glitters, or you'll see me use a portion of parchment paper to roll the entire cup up. But because the majority of the cup was fabric, I didn't want to use the parchment paper with fear that I would get some of the glitter on top of the fabric, which I'm trying to avoid. So just a gloved hand, push down all of that glitter, and then go ahead and let that dry. Put it on your turner. And I did about two coats of epoxy, and that was perfect. That was just enough to get everything smooth so that I could go in with sanding, decals, and kind of getting this on for final coat. So as always, we're going to go ahead and sand, sand, sand here. I'm going to use my nail file Dremel tool here to get a nice fine line of stainless steel around the top rim. The rest of the cup was really rather smooth, so I didn't really need to do too much work anywhere else. I do follow up with a 60 grit sand block just on the bottom just to make sure everything's smooth and level and even. And then we're going to go ahead and get our decals applied. 
All right, so as you can see here, this is sort of my weird slanted section, and I decided that I was gonna make this the focal point of the tumbler because I want to try and cover it up. Although I don't think the decals cover it up, it does force your eye to draw attention to the decal and less attention to the slanted background that it is on top of. So I got this Let It Snow decal, of course, from Creative Fabrica. I have a link and code that you can use in the description box down below to get all access. And so I cut this on some holographic vinyl, just like the silver holographic vinyl. It's absolutely beautiful. You can get it from Tech Wrap. You can get it from a vinyl gallery. I will link both down in the description box. And then we're going to just cover up the seam where the fabric meets the glitter with some washi tape. So I have some silver holographic washi tape that I'm going to go around with first. And then after I've done that right along that line there, I'm going to go in with a, another washi tape. I have this red metallic washi tape that I also picked up from Hobby Lobby in a different pack. And we're going to use that to go right up against the edge of the silver holographic. Again, just trying to cover up that seam. This, this washi tape is not as thick as I probably needed in order to just go around with one uh, piece of vinyl necessarily. If I had cut this using a shape in Cricut Design Space, I most likely would have cut a much wider space just because the fabric was not 100% even down along that seam. So I needed kind of a thicker piece, which is why I'm going in with the second colored washi tape to kind of mimic and be that second line to make sure that I have everything covered up and that you can't see any glitter. Um, or the unevenness of the fabric during and dur at that bottom section there, if that makes any sense. So once I've gotten that applied, I am going to now do my snowflake decals. So you'll recognize the snowflakes that are on the holographic silver. These were from my last tutorial where we did that multi-glittered V-split. I'm just using a majority of these as well because I had them. I always keep any of my extra decals in like a bin I have of just like things that I make duplicates of. I always have like duplicate water slides just in case one cracks or rips. Um, so I always keep any of my extra decals on hand. That way I can go and use them for potentially other projects and things. I also did cut larger snowflakes using just another snowflake image in Cricut Design Space. And I cut these using this non-permanent this removable vinyl from Cricut. It came in a pack of different patterns. It had this beautiful plaid as well as like a polka dot and a, uh, I think it's like a black and white plaid as well was in that bundle. So I will link that down in the description box as well. You don't have to necessarily use this. I just happened to have this and I thought it would go so perfect um, with the kind of design and aesthetic of this winter let it snow tumbler we're doing here. And so I decided that I would cut some snowflakes on that pattern vinyl. Obviously, snowflakes aren't actually this color in real life, but it just matched really well. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just finish applying the decals. No rhyme, no reason. I'm just really trying to cover up a bunch of the white space down here. You could certainly leave it plain as well. I think that's also beautiful. Um, something that I had thought about doing and then kind of just didn't commit to was in my final coats, going ahead and applying some chunkier, like white translucent glitter to the pattern section, just in little sections. I also think what is another idea that kind of came to my head afterwards but I hadn't done is doing like a drip on this would also be beautiful as well. So as always this cup went back on the turner for two final coats of epoxy. I used the lightning cure for my second to last coat and then I always use Amazing Killer Class Plus for my final final coats because I love the shine and I love that extra added UV protection. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did definitely be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and you guys all know you'll know that I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.